Hello, everyone. Okay, so the first program in Chapter 8 is initials. All right, so write a program that gets a string containing a person's first, middle, and last names, and then display their first, middle, and last initials. For example, if the user enters John William Smith, the program should display JWS. Okay, so let's start. I want us to create this program into functions. Let's break them down into functions. And the first function I want us to create is a function that's going to get the person's uh, first, middle, and last names. Now you can create, you can create separate functions to get the individual names. So you can create a function to get the first name. You can create a function to get the middle name. You can create a function to get a last name. You can create individual functions like that. Or you can also create one function that gets all the names. In this program, let's create one function to, to get all the names. Okay. So I'm going to define a function. I'm going to call it get person names. Okay. This function is not going to accept in any argument, so I'm not going to define any parameters. And what this function is going to do is it's going to get the names, right? So let's start with the first name. In order to get the name, I'm going to use an input function. So the input function takes in a couple of arguments. It takes in what you want to display to the user as a prompt. And so what I want to display to the user in double quotation is going to be a string. I'm going to say, please enter your first name. So the input function is going to pop up this text to the user. And it's going to ask the user to type in, like it's going to say, please enter your first name. It's going to pop up some kind of text box, okay? And it's going to allow the user to type in a value. Now, whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us as a string. And so when it's returning that value, when the input function is returning that value, we, value, we need a place to store it. And so over here, I'm going to create a variable called first name and it's going to store that value that's being returned as a string. I'm going to do the same thing for middle name and last name. So I'm going to copy this line and paste it. Now change the text now to please enter your middle name. It's going to return that value as a string when the user types it. I'm going to create a variable called middle name, not second name, middle name to store that value. I'm going to cop you know, copy this text again. I have it copied paste it, change the text to please enter your last name. And then it, after the user types in the value, that value is going to be returned back to us. We need a place to store it. So I'm going to store it in a variable called last name. And then now in Python, you can return multiple values. You can return multiple values at the same time. So I'm going to return all of them. I'm going to return the first name, the middle name, and then the last name. I'm going to separate what I the multiple values I want to return with commas. So you can do this. You can send these. You can return all these multiple values. Now, when you call this function, you also need to have three variables to receive these values respectively. If you have three variables, the first variable is going to receive the first value here. Second variable is going to receive the second value here, and then the third variable is going to receive the third value here. Don't worry, you see it in action. I just wanted to mention that that Python can send that you can return multiple values this way. So that's our first function. Okay, now I want us to create our next function. The next function I want us to create is a function that's going to take the names, the first, middle, and last names, and then make initials out of them. And when it's done, it's going to return those initials. Right? So a function that's going to take these names and then make initials out of them and return them. So let's define a function. I'm going to call it get initials. Okay, this function is going to get initials. If it wants to, if we want to get initials, then we need a name so we can get make initials out of. And so, this function I'm going to define as parameters. The first name it needs the first name, it needs the middle name, and also it needs the last name. So I'm defining parameters for these values. All right. So before I continue, how do we get the initial of a string? So let me show you something here. With the Python shell. The Python shell is just a simple place that you can just type in code and it returns a value to you. If I type in the number one and hit enter, it just returns one. If I type in one plus one, hit enter, it just returns the, the sum of one plus one. You don't have to type print necessarily. It just takes in code and, and spits it back out to you. When I type in print, oops, oops, <laughs> print a string called, let's say, house. It just types, you know, returns the output to me. All right, so what I can, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a variable. 
Well, before that, before that, let me explain something here with that with comments. So if you have a string, say, named Kakra, or like a, not another string named Kakra, but a string with the value Kakra as a string, okay? Um, every string, okay, it, basically, sorry, every character in a string has what's called an index, right? So the very first character in the string has an index of zero. The indexing starts from zero. Every character has an index, and you can use these indexes to access these, you know, the each character, each character in a string. The first character in the string has an index of zero. Second character has an index of one. This has an index of two, three, and four. Okay, indexing starts from zero, so on and so forth. So if I wanted to ac um, access this character here, I know the first character has an index of zero. The second character has an index of one, and this character will have an index of two. So we know that, right? So let me just show you some more of it in using the Python shell. Now this doesn't affect our program. This is just for testing in the Python shell. I'm going to create a string. I'm going to call it name, and I'm going to initialize it to the value Kakra, my name. I have been using my name for so many examples. It's, I guess I love my name too much. Huh? <laughs> okay. So when I hit enter, that has been stored in memory. That has been remembered by the program. Not our program per se, but then by this IDE. So if I print out the value of name, it's going to come to me and say, okay, Kakra, right? Because that's what's stored in name. What if I wanted to access the first element here? We know that the, the first character has an index of zero. Okay, every character has an index, and the first character has an, character has an index of zero. This one has an index of one, and so on and so forth. So if I wanted to print out the first character of Kakra, here's how I write it. I say print out not what's stored in name only, but then the character at index zero. Use square brackets to target the index. So print out, okay, the character at index zero in this string name, or basically what's stored in name. So when I hit enter, it prints out K. If I wanted to print out the character at index one, which is the character the character A, I'll do the same thing. Now over here I'm going to I'm going to hit push the up arrow key to bring out the last mess, the last command I typed, and then change it. Print out the character at index one in this or in what's stored in name. Hit enter and it prints out A. If I wanted to print out this R, I know this has an index of zero. This has an index of one. K has an index of two, and then R has an index of Three. So I'm going to push the up arrow key, change it to three, and then it's going to print out R. So basically, if I wanted to get the initial of any string or any name, I just use index zero to access the first character of that name. Because this was just to show you so you can understand. I'm going to go back to the debug.io, click it to hide it for now.